train data here I wanted to go over a simple weighted least squares linear regression in R and R studio using the built-in data set empty cars weighted weighted regression can be useful in situations where the data points have different levels of accuracy or different levels of importance and you want to make sure that you're not influenced by measurement errors or some kind of outlier in the data so um, in, the, in this example, I'm going to just use one independent variable and one dependent variable and compare the math of weighted linear regression to ordinary least squares linear regression. So conceptually, um, conceptually, let's, let's go through some code and kind of describe what's happening. I already wrote it out. So empty cars, what I'm doing is I'm selecting the weight in miles per gallon columns, and then I'm creating a new variable called true miles per gallon, which I'm creating using the R norm function, which creates a random normal distribution. And I'm centering that at the mean of mile per gallon, but I'm adding, um, I'm making the standard deviation too. So this creates some error. Uh, and when we run just this line of code, you'll see three columns you'll see the weight miles per gallon and what I'm calling the true miles per gallon, which is different than miles per gallon. So let's pretend that our data set, right, we have the weight of the engine, but then what we have is the miles per gallon from like real world driving conditions. And we think that that is sometimes like not accurate for whatever reason. There's stuff that happens in the world or you have a bad driver or something, they don't follow directions. And sometimes your the recorded miles per gallon is like, wrong in some way. It's just a measurement error. And we have what we call true miles per gallon, which might be the miles per gallon as reported from a, like a controlled laboratory setting where you put the car on a treadmill basically and measure its exhaust. We don't want to just recreate this previous study maybe that had weight versus true miles per gallon, we want to do our own study, but we also think our own study has some error and we want to control for that in some way. So the next thing I want to do is create another column called standard errors. And this column standard errors, it's the standard deviation between miles per gallon and the true miles per gallon. And in, or, in order to do that, I'm using row wise. If I didn't use row, row wise, it would cre calculate the standard error of the vector and all these numbers would be the same going down. So by inserting a step in the pipe operations, I've asked it to do the operation across these two rows. And then finally, what I'm doing is I'm creating another column called weights. And the weights I'm, I'm saying are the square root of these standard errors. <clears throat> we can also do, for example, the reciprocal of the standard errors, one over, that's, that, that's another way of doing the weights. You could do the reciprocal instead of the square root. But the LM function, when you specify the weights argument, has as a default the square root. <laughs> So um, going forward, here's our OLS model. You use the LM function in base R. Here we're doing miles per gallon as a function of weight in the empty cars data set. I use the coefficient function to, <coughs> to get the slope and the intercept for this OLS regression model. <coughs> now remember the slope you can calculate as the person correlation coefficient R multiplied by the quotient of the standard deviation of y over the standard deviation of x. This closed form equation works because you only have one dependent and one independent variable. Now, to in order to calculate the intercept, you take the mean of y, you subtract the slope, and then you multiply that by the mean of x. Now for weighted linear regression, you'll notice that the math looks very similar. You're taking each x observation and subtracting the mean, and each y observation and subtracting the mean. And in the case of the denominator, you're taking the x, subtract x, x, and then you subtract the mean of x, and you square that. Except here what we're doing is we're multiplying it by the weights that we calculated. 
and then the equation for the intercept is the same. It's y bar minus the slope multiplied by x bar. Now here, what I've done in the math using d pliers, I've just reconstructed the equation for the slope up here, but doing it one step at a time so that it's super clear. I take the weight subtracted from the mean of the weight, or the, it, I take the mean of the weight subtracted from weight, and the mean of miles per gallon from miles per gallon. I can also do the thing in the denominator where I square it, and here I multiply it by the weights, and then I divide one over the other. So let's run this line of code. And the code, for whatever reason, is not compiling properly. Maybe, perhaps, because I didn't run the code up here all the way through. So scroll down. And now, let's try to run the sign of code. Here we go. So here I have the slope of negative 5.59. And if I take the mean of y minus the slope multiplied by the mean of x, I also get the intercept. And we can also compare that to the weighted linear model directly out of the func uh, out of the box where I'm specifying weights equals weights. And I'm getting the same slope and the same intercept. Here, this code is commented out, but I'm calculating the weights as one over the reciprocal. So you could also make the weights different if you want. And finally, what I'll do is all ggplot mt cars. I can create a title, gg title, for example, mt cars. I'll use geom smooth to get a linear model and take away the standard error. And here I can use geom AB line and specify the intercept. And the slope. And color that something different like gray. OLS versus weighted linear regression. I'll run this graph so that we can see the difference between our linear regression and our weighted linear regression. Which in this case wasn't super different. I'll zoom out.